There you go. Yeah, like a man. All right. Are we going to get both of these guys? I, I, we do both I, think we could, I think we could arrange that. What's going on, fire team? Welcome back to Shift Fire, an exploration and appreciation of all things military culture. I'm one of your hosts, Cameron Fath, former Army Ranger, and with me, as always, I'm Israel Wright, former Green Berets. Take, take your ear pro off. Oh, okay. We're so, not shooting yet. Okay, no, all right, good. Thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Israel Wright, former Green Beret. It's good to be back with you. Welcome to an episode of Lethal Antiquities. Cameron and I are exploring the long and illustrious history of firearms uh, throughout the ages. We are going to be presented with a mystery box. Inside this box will be a weapon of some sort. We know not what, but we will find out. We will have with us a weapons expert from the film, video game, military, or the firearms industry. We're gonna talk about the weapon's history, its function, we're gonna get some knowledge, and most importantly, we're gonna shoot it! That's right, we're gonna shoot it, folks. It's gonna be a good time. I'm excited! But before we get into that, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up on the latest and greatest from all things Shift Fire. You ready? Let's do it, man. Let's go. Clay, what's going on? There's hey, a familiar boys. face. Clay, good to see you again, man. You too. Welcome back, Thank first you very and foremost. Much. For the viewers that haven't seen you before, why don't you explain a little bit about your background and what you do. My name is Clay Van Sickle. I'm an armorer with MovieGunGuy.com. We provide all the weapons for movies and TV shows all over the world. Right on. Badass, yeah. right? Yeah. Anything that you've done recently that people would recognize? Uh, we just finished Gemini Lounge, which is a movie coming out uh, with Emil Hirsch. It's about some true stories of the uh, mob back in the 1970s. Hey, all right. Very godfathery, nice. yeah. man. We know why you're here, right? And I'm excited you're here because that means we're gonna shoot something. I'm very curious. Very obscure, maybe different, possibly. Uh, well, it'll be never it'll be new for me because I've shot an M4 and what I've shot on Lethal Antiquities, that's about it. So. Yeah. so this is a good day for me, man. It is. So you know what I want to know, give me the hint. All right, let's see. Uh, today's hint will be the 70s. The 70s. The 70s. Man. Wait, are we talking 1970s or 70 AD? Is it gonna be a slingshot, maybe a bow and arrow? <laughs> Let me rephrase. Okay. The hint for today is the 70s. Oh, the shit. 70s. Now wait, now, now are we talking like 70 millimeter? You know, it's gonna be a cannon or something like that. I know you, Clay. I know you're good at misleading us, so. Oh no, this is a pretty big, but lengthwise, not very wide. So I'm gonna go ahead. Is there a G3 in here? Like an H&K G3? Not a bad guess. Not a bad guess. Yep. What, what do you think? I think it's a trap. I think it's like some little like, oh, uh, yeah. you know. Classic, classic yeah. Clay move. Yeah, exactly. There's some a little AIP shooter, like little handgun, you know. So a Walther PBK or something like that. You All know? right, not, not a terrible guess either. Okay. You're both wrong as usual. Yes. Yes. Ready? Yep, yep, I am ready. All right, just humble. Oh, I know, oh, what the front You were right, you were right, it was the box. Oh! Whoa! Very cool. Dude, talk about that big iron, man. Right? Oh, Behold, if you will, the Smith & Wesson Model 3. Smith & Wesson Model 3. Better known oh, as the Schofield. The Schofield. Yeah. So why 70s? 1870. Oh, I was done with the whole period oh, thing, the very time close. thing. I was right. Yeah. I was wrong. So in 1870, this was introduced as the first official issue weapon for the U.S. military that fired cartridges. Oh my God, so yes. cool. Would this be on horseback primarily? Yeah, so the cavalry used these quite a bit. Major George Schofield made some design improvements in 1875, which led to this being chambered from 44 to 45. The military wanted 45 Colt mm -hmm. because they already had some single action armies in use, but Smith & Wesson decided to go their own way and so they made a different round called 45 Smith & Wesson, which later became called 45 Schofield, which is a little bit shorter. Oh, okay, is this something that only like an officer or something would carry or would the standard soldier carry something like this? At, at that time, yeah, mostly be officers. Okay. This was Similar. not meant to be a frontline weapon. Similar to that Mauser we had, it's more for the brass, if you will. Exactly. Just kind of a nice shiny thing to let you know, hey, enlisted guys, we're better than you. Right. Yeah. This is something I think I'm recognizing from maybe Red Dead Redemption 2. Absolutely. Uh, right. You see Dutch Vanderlyn carry a pair of these, there as you a go. matter of fact. Yeah. Very. And you'll see these all throughout the Wild West. Uh, Virgil Earp. Uh, carried one of these at the OK Corral. Okay. Uh, Billy the Kid, uh, Ike Clanton had one at, oh. at one point. You see them all through history. Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven. Of course. And Ooh. actually, kind of a cool thing, the two that I brought today are from Mike Tristano's private collection. These two specific ones were used by Ben Foster in 310 to Yuma. 
Yeah. Okay. So nice. these are the ones he had in the reverse draw holsters. So we can oh. scuff these up, is what you're saying. Absolutely, just chuck, chuck them over the yeah, place. Yeah. Them, yeah. I mean, what are these made of? I mean, they look pretty solid. This particular version is a reproduction by Uberti, which is okay. an Italian company. They make a lot of reproduction Western weapons. And there's a couple of changes from the original design, the top strap is a little more beefed up than the originals because they had say. some issues with those breaking. Um, and if I didn't mention, this is kind of an interesting uh, action. Oh, okay. wow. So it's a break action, kind of like the Webleys that came after this. And a lot of those designs were based on this. So Clay, looking at the, you said it's a brake loader, right? Right. What's what's the advantage or disadvantage of this design of revolver as opposed to what we see normally today with the uh, the, the ejector cylinder, rod? Yeah, the ejection rod coming out the side. Yeah, you'll see the standard ejection rod on the Colt Single Action Armies, a lot of the classic Wild West guns. The benefit of this is you can see the ejector kick out. And if you do that nice and smart, all six of those pieces of brass get out of your way and you can quickly reload. That was right. one of the reasons that the cavalry liked these quite a bit. Yeah, it seems like you have a lot more, a, a larger margin for error in, in, the, in getting those rounds back in. You're on a horse, you're moving around, not this kind of side thing maybe, it right. takes a little more practice, I don't know. Exactly, well, and mostly clearing those rounds, especially yeah. they were using black powder and that would often gum up some of the action and lock yeah, those pieces of yeah. brass stuck in there. Yeah. So that positive ejection really helped a lot. Okay, talking about history of revolvers, so the side loading, breech loading, revolvers, was that something that came after this or was that just a different model? Exactly. So you moved on past the Schofields, past the Colt single action armies, you'd get into the Colt Lightnings and the Thunderers. Yeah. Those are the first real double action revolvers that you're talking about. Capacity? How many rounds? Six rounds. Six rounds. Mm. Perfect. So don't miss. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. Well, it's okay. We have two of them, so we have twice as many chances to miss. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. Well, man, I can't wait to shoot this. You, you want to go? Let's do it, man. I want to get on the range. It. Absolutely. Let's go. All right, guys, here we are. So the Schofield. This one's chambered in 45 Colt, the classic Western revolver round. So just keep in mind as you're loading this, one little click there for the half cock, grab the release, take it open all the way. That should kick most of the rounds out, if not all of them. Then you can reload back to one. And it's a single action revolver, so the trigger only does one thing. It just drops the hammer, so you gotta cock it in between each shot, just like most of the Western guns. All right, man, well, who's going first? You wanna do the- Classic. Uh, all right, classic, right? All right. Huh, Rock, paper, paper scissors. Ha! Six shooters. What? You just made that up! Sheet and back. All right. All right. So there's your gun. Sir. And then I'm just gonna grab these. Bad Larry. You wanna run with five? Yeah, just go with five. Range is hot, eyes and ears. All yours, sir. Tap rack Sorry. <laughs> Trading kicked in. So the little trick when you open this up, yeah. If you open it up nice and smart, it tends to kick the rounds out all the way. Okay. All right, here we go. Make sure you're burying that front sight. There it is. Dang. Nice. Go to uh, half, cock, half cock, finger off the trigger, and we'll kick it open and open it smart. There you go. Yeah, like a man. All right, I see. <laughs> yeah. Are we able to crack, 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 crack with this? So you can. Here's the fun part. Again, as you're doing that, what often happens- Oh, the breach goes. Is that uh... happens. So it's not a great idea with these ones. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to get both of these guys? Can we do both I think of we them? Could, I think we could arrange that. Yeah. Do you want a dual wheel? Yeah, dual wheel, baby. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Do All nice right. and easy. Party at the OK Corral. times, Clay. So the Schofield 45 Smith & Wesson Model 3, what'd you guys think? Clean gun, dude. Yeah. Really, really fun gun to shoot. Honestly, I thought it looks really girthy. It looks super hefty. Yeah. But when you actually shoot the thing, I think that heftiness comes into play where it makes shooting it so smooth and a dream. A couple misfires, but revolvers, are pretty reliable, so I'm assuming it must have been a light strike with the, yeah, with we the ammo or something. Yep. But yeah, this I really enjoyed shooting this one. Thanks for bringing it in, man. That, yeah. was, that was a delight. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, really fun to shoot. I had a real hard time with the double uh, cocking right yep. there with the one-handed cocking. Oh, yeah. But uh, I, I'm sure it's something you get better with with time. Don't believe but, what you see in the movies. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. Hard. yeah. <laughs> but no, man. Honestly, impressions. Uh, awesome gun to have in a 
in the time that it was being used. Yeah. Right, especially for cavalry where you oh, only yeah. got one hand to deal with things. Yeah. That reloading brake action mm -hmm. helps a lot. I, I love uh, I, I love the fact that this is a recreation. So there right. are companies today that take the time to do the research to actually recreate these classic guns, which I really appreciate, like keeping that history alive. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Smith and Wesson was one of those too. Yeah. Smith and Wesson makes a reproduction, and some of the Italian companies do as well. It does. And just watching what it did to the ballistic gel, the penetration. I mean, that sucker went all the way through. I yeah. mean, I didn't really expect much less from a 45. Right. Even if it is a different what the Schofield. Yeah. A Schofield 45 versus the Colt yeah. 45s. Yeah, th um, this one is chambered for 45 Colt. It is. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's we were... a slightly longer round. Okay, but yeah, it's gonna do exactly what you want it to do, yep. and that's put whatever is in front of it on its. Right. <laughs> if you notice, there there isn't a big cavity right. that it created. It just went completely straight through, like pierced the ballistic and went all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, is that gonna be because? that's a lead ball, not necessarily a projectile, because we're used to hollow points nowadays, right. which create just fist sides yeah. cavities. They're looking the for target. that big expansion, but with a solid lead ball, not only do you not have the copper jacket that comes yeah. off, it's just one solid piece of lead, but it's putting holes in targets. And especially at the time, you might not die from the shot, but you might die from gangrene three weeks oh, later. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you'd die for a paper cut back then, so right. I, you know. And you look at all the outlaws that carried it, Jesse James, uh, Billy the Kid. Cameron Fath. Cameron Fath. And not an outlaw, but Teddy yeah. Roosevelt also carried one of these. Wow. So Great they were used all over the place. Room. So they didn't last a whole lot of time in the military mm. because of the round differences between this and the 45 Colt. But in civilian use, this was used all over the place. We see a lot of the revolvers, right? Late 1800s, early 1900s and stuff like that. I mean, when did we start to evolve away from kind of the revolver primarily? This particular revolver was around until about 1915. It stopped production then. But if you think about it, 1911, that oh, came out right. before this stopped That's being when the manufactured. the fanboys were born. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> but you go from the single actions to the Colt Lightnings, the double action revolvers, and then from there we get into the automatics. But the double actions were kind of the, the king of the, the crop for a very long time, really up until 1918, 1920, somewhere mm. in there when the automatics started to take over a little bit more. Yeah, okay, cool, nice. So we shot mostly smokeless powder, right. right? But we did do one shot of the kind of the classic black powder. What's the difference between the two? Because that's interesting to me. Smokeless powder and black powder, what's the difference? Right, well, black powder burns a lot slower and it's, it's more of a push, less of a crack. Uh, modern smokeless powder burns a lot faster. You get a lot more pressure out of it. The big issue with black powder back in the day was one, you see that big cloud of smoke, right? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of classic in all the Westerns. But, well, hey, that guy who hey. just shot me is right over there. He's right there. Real <laughs> obvious. Yeah. Uh, but the other problem is black powder is hygroscopic, so it soaks up water. Uh, so meaning... Uh, powder wet, big problem. Right, okay. and cleaning the guns after the fact too, because there is water in it. Regardless of where you are, it's gonna end up rusting your gun. So you gotta be real meticulous about cleaning. And so black powder transitioning into smokeless powder, whereabouts did that transition take place? Smokeless powder was invented around 1884, but in the US it more or less came into popularity around 1908. And you know, three years later, we had the 1911 introduced to the US military. So right around 1908, 1910. Right on. Awesome, Clay. Thank you so much for coming out, man. Right. Head on over to moviegunguy.com. They're doing some awesome stuff. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like it, Go ahead, hop into the comment section. Let us know what weapons you want to be featured on future episodes of Lethal Antiquities. And before we go, you probably noticed this sexy shirt that Israel's got on. Israel, tell them what we got for them. Folks, this is the brand new Shift Fire t-shirt featuring the MREs that we love to eat from All Ate Up. Uh, go ahead and check the description below to get yours today. Stay sexy, Fire Team. We'll catch you on the next one. What's going on, Fire Team? Welcome back to Shift Fire. I'm oh, sorry, I it up. Okay. <laughs> One little click. <laughs> you good? Yep, good. Okay. Great. Right. When did that tra transition happen about from black powder to smoke with powder? It's a damn good question that I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Damn it, that's gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, I do, because I don't want to look like a total <laughs> No that's weirdo.